Hello, this is quiz one. This was given uh, summer of 2019 for Dr. Chen's section, but it's exactly the same as the modern uh, 303 in the topics that it covers. So let's get going. Question one, we're just applying the eigenvalue method to find a solution to this given system with some initial conditions uh, here. So the first thing we have to do is take this from system of equation form and turn it into a matrix. So we're starting off with x1 prime is equal to 3x1 plus 4x2 and then x2 prime is equal to 3x1 plus 2x2. And now to turn this into a matrix, really uh, you just have to keep, keep the shape the same but replace your, your symbols a little bit. So we'll have x prime is equal to the matrix 3, 4, 3, 2 times x. And this works out because if we were to expand x prime and x here, really this is a column vector, x1 prime and x2 prime set equal to 3, 4, 3, 2, and that's all multiplied by x1, x2. And if you multiply this thing out, you'll see that we get the exact same uh, set of equations that we have up here. So we need some eigenvalues uh, before we can do anything else. So we're solving the determinant of a minus lambda i is equal to zero. We're solving for those lambdas where this is our coefficient matrix a. So uh, really we're, we're finding the determinant of three minus lambda, four, three, two minus lambda. So we can expand this because the determinant of a two by two matrix is ad minus dc. This gives us three minus lambda times two minus lambda minus 12 is equal to zero, or lambda squared minus five lambda minus six is equal to zero. Factoring this, we get lambda minus six, lambda plus one is equal to zero. My, uh, that, that works, right? Yep, that's good. And so we get lambda is equal to six and negative one. So now we need some eigenvectors, and we can get that uh, by plugging by plugging in lambda equals either six or negative one to uh, a minus lambda i, and uh, solving that. So plugging in lambda is equal to six. What do we get? We get negative three, four, three, negative two, and oh wait, no, I, I can't. I'm bad at math. That's negative. That's negative four there. Okay. So simplifying this, we get three negative four zero zero. Just using some elementary row operations, and we can uh, set, set set this equation up. Uh, just extract this equation here because uh, we can set this equal to zero and see that this is three x one minus four x two is equal to zero. We'll move that over there. Three x one is equal to four x two. And the vector that we get that we get out of that is uh, four, three. Okay, there is our first there is our first eigenvector there. Let's use lambda is equal to negative one to find our second eigenvector. Uh, a minus lambda i equals zero. That will give us uh, where where is our matrix A? Three four three two. So that will be four four. 3, 3, that simplifies down to 1, 1, 0, 0. And uh, from that, we get an eigenvector of negative 1, 1. So at this point, we are almost done because we know that our solution will take the form x of t is equal to c1 v1 e to the lambda 1 t plus c2 v2 e to the lambda 2 t. And so plugging all of this in, we have x of t is equal to c1, some unknown constant, times v1, which is 4, 3, e to the uh, 6t. There's our lambda 1, the eigenvalue associated with that eigenvector. And then plus c2, negative 1, 1, e to the negative t. Now, in order to find these C1s and C2s, we have to use these initial conditions here. Uh, really, that's saying that just, just like we said, that this x here uh, could be broken down into this column vector x1, 
x2, like that, uh, what we can do here is is do uh, is say that when t is equal to zero, so x at zero is equal to x one at zero, x two at zero, and we're told from these initial conditions that both of these are one. So this is one one, and of course x at zero is equal to all of this when we plug in zero for t. So we get c one for three plus c two negative one one. Perfect. Uh, and now all we have to do is solve for c1 and c2. We can do that with an augmented matrix. 4, 3, negative 1, 1, 1, 1. Let's solve this. Uh, it's, a, it's a little, little bit wonky. Um, let's multiply row 2 by 4. We'll get 12. Actually, no, we don't need, we don't need to do that. What am I talking about? Uh, we can just we can just subtract row two from row one. We'll get a one here, a negative two here, and a zero. We can subtract three row ones from row two. That gives us zero, seven, one. So this becomes one seventh there. And then we'll add two row twos to row one, and get two over seven. So this means that C one is equal to two over seven, and C two is one over seven. So just replacing that up there, 2 over 7, 1 over 7, we have our answer. And I'm going to go uh, check that real quick, and I'll be right back. OK, that's correct. Let's go grab our second question. I'm going to go copy this down here. Oh, there we go. And we're uh, finding the general solutions to this system right here. So we're probably going to run into some other kind of, uh, you know, solution type, where we just had a very normal, nothing weird about this, uh, this eigenvector eigenvalue uh, setup uh, for question number one. But here, we're, we're probably going to end up with either complex eigenvalues or multiple eigenvalues. Uh, let's let's figure out what we get. So again, again, we're solving the determinant of a minus lambda i equals zero for those lambdas where this is our coefficient matrix a. So we are we are finding the determinant of one minus lambda minus five, one negative one minus lambda is equal to zero. This gives us one minus lambda, negative one minus lambda. Uh, yeah, those multiplied together plus five is equal to zero or lambda squared plus zero lambda plus five four is equal to zero, and this has roots lambda is equal to plus or minus uh, 2i. So there's the complex thing we were uh, expecting to get, but we have no real parts, so our job is actually much more simple here. There are fewer things to keep track of. Uh, let's plug in lambda is equal to 2i to a minus lambda i to find an eigenvector. So we'll get 1 minus 2i minus 5, and 1 and negative 1 minus 2i. And I'll just use this second, uh, this second row as an example. Uh, we can use that to pull out the eigenvector 1 and, or sorry, not, not yeah. Yeah, 1 plus 2i and 1. So here is, we'll call this v1, we'll call this lambda 1. What I'm going to do is set up uh, C, well, we don't really need the C, but uh, V1 e to the lambda 1 t. So in our case, this will be 1 plus 2 t, sorry, 1 plus 2 i, 1, and e to the 2 i t. Now what we can do is apply uh, our nice little uh, Euler's formula here that e to the e to the i t that will give us cosine t plus i sine t there. Uh, and so, so this uh, can be rewritten as 1 plus 2i 1 times cosine of t plus i sine of t. Now the only thing that we have left to do is expand this into a real component, an imaginary component, 
and then we'll drop the uh, i on the imaginary component and replace it with just some uh, arbitrary constant. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's try to figure out what pieces of this expansion here will give us real uh, bits. So if we multiply cosine by one on the top and cosine by one on the bottom, we'll get something real. And then if we multiply i sine t uh, by, oh, I, 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 uh, damn it. So what we can do at this point, uh, in order to expand this a little bit more, is to apply this formula here, that e to the i t, or I'll be a little bit more specific, e to the i times c t is equal to the cosine of c t plus i times sine of c t. And those c's look really weird next to the parentheses. Um, I hope you can hope you can read that, but, the, but in our case, that means that we can rewrite this as one plus two i, one, and then cosine of two t plus i sine of two t, like that. And now all we have to figure out is uh, how does this thing expand? So, you know, uh, if, we, if we kind of foil these guys in on the top and also multiply them in on the bottom, we're gonna get some components that have an i attached, uh, and some components that are purely real. And what we're going to do is split up our eventual solution uh, by those lines. So when do we get a real component here? Let's make a, a vector for it. Well, if we multiply cosine on the top to that one, we get cosine of 2t, which is real. And also if we multiply it on the bottom to that one, we'll get a cosine of 2t. But then if we multiply i sine 2t, to that uh, 2i on top, we'll also get something real. Those i's will multiply together and give us negative one. So that gives us minus two sine 2t right there. And then uh, that's actually, that's it for the reals. We'll add a c1 and an e to the real part of our eigenvalue times t. So e to the, e to the, uh, actually, sorry, no. Our eigenvalue has uh, no real part at all. Yeah, it, our eigenvalue was just plus or minus 2i. If this was 1 plus or minus 2i, we would be left with an e to the 1t here. But, uh, you know, we have no real part, so we don't have to worry about that at all. And then finally, we have c2 times the vector formed from all of the imaginary bits dropping the i. So if we multiply this cosine, the cosine to the 2i on top, we'll get 2i cosine drop the i, we just have 2 cosine 2t. Two and additionally, if we multiply i to this 1 up top, we'll get plus sine of 2t. I think I just called that a cosine. Sorry, sorry if I just misspoke. Uh, and then finally, if we multiply, if we multiply cosine on the bottom here, we get, uh, yeah, sorry, if we multiply cosine on the bottom, we get something real. We already dealt with that over here. If we multiply sine on the bottom, we get I sine of 2t, so we'll put a sine of 2t down there, and this is our answer. So yeah, and in, in the end, it's just about uh, splitting our answer, splitting splitting this equation up uh, by the real and imaginary components. Yeah, so you only end up having to find one eigen, you only end up having to use one eigenvalue and one eigenvector uh, because these are a complex conjugate pair. You will end up uh, going down the same route if you. Were. Well, you'll get a you'll get an identical answer. It'll actually look different, uh, which is which is an issue. So you'll see if we if we go head over to the answer key here, um, blah blah blah. Yeah, the, you see how they have they have some different things going on here with with fives and uh, negative twos and, and all kinds of different stuff. And and they're talking about yeah, depending on which eigenvector you use, you might get a different answer. So let's just let's just make sure that these these guys match. We have uh, cosine minus two sine cosine and then two cosine plus sine and sine. Okay, perfect. And uh, we are we are done. That's it for quiz one.